the right, top I'll let head. y'all see me in a minute. I'm trying to eat. The top of your head. Let me. I'm nosy. What you eating? No. <laughs> I'm eating some. Um. Hold on. I have some. Oh. Broccoli, potatoes, carrots, um, onions. I had um red peppers, yellow peppers, and orange peppers in it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's something I made up. <laughs> How y'all doing, ladies? Doing good. How are you? All right. Long time no see, Letitia. Yeah, it has been. <laughs> Let me go get myself ready. Mm. Be right back. Oh, she's playing them dancing. Oh, what you been up to, lady? Who's she talking to? You. You're the only person on here. <laughs> oh. Oh. Everything. 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 Um. This is what I've been up to. This is my. This right here. I am beautiful. Oh, okay. Um. For these little girls. That. That has. Um, I can't tell nobody. Amy, close your ears. But right now, until the book and the, the, the day come out, when they, that's my favorite book. <laughs> okay. Because these little girls are just, I mean, they just loving themselves. They get, they're gaining confidence. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it's, it feels good to know that when God tell you to do something and to watch it, you know. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, April. Hi. You're muted, April. Can't hear you. <laughs> I sure was. Sorry. You guys doing okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing good. <clears throat> On here twice. Oh, there she go. <laughs> hey, Michelle. Unmute your. Hey. You got to put bring audio on this one because we can't hear you. Yep. And then it'll say audio. Hey, Michelle, Chris Kirkpatrick. I speak a lot of languages, but lips. <laughs> speak, speak one of Is that better? Yes. Then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's stuffing broccoli in her mouth. I was about to take a picture of you. <laughs> Don't do it. Everybody doing? Good. Good. I'm excited. Hey, Miss April in the house. Hey. Michelle, how are this you? Is already live on this. This is always live on YouTube. Okay. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we are doing what we got to do so we can keep it moving, honey. That's that's where we're at right now. Laura's been doing good. I'll be. I miss all y'all. I miss all y'all. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it, I was excited when she said everybody was coming back just for at least one time. <laughs> Y'all know I'm moving obedient. I'm hey. moving obedient. I'm in Laura's world, so I'm gonna let Laura drive and I'm just gonna sit back in Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how I do, don't you? Show sure not, but just a bit. Laura, Laura talking about some, mm. Mm -mm, not today, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> um, so, it's good to see y'all though, really, really. I was so excited to, see everyone say that they were coming today in the text so i'm hoping that everybody will be on here you know how michelle is a stickler for time so it's <laughs> she's the same online as she is in person it's 7 59. hey paulette <laughs> hi latasha hello everybody well, uh, look at Misty. Hey, Tawana. <laughs> wow, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Laura, you go, go ahead, Ava. I'm in your world. 
Okay, ladies, well, welcome tonight to the sixth annual, com uh, what is it, Complete Women Conference, Naked But Not Ashamed, online version. You know, as, as we are moving forward to in this day and age, in this strange time that we're in, you know, Michelle was, you know, she's always innovative and coming up with different things. So we thought about, um, she talked to me about bringing everybody together online. And I thought it would be a great idea. I didn't know how she was going to do it. And here we are. So welcome, welcome, welcome back to those that I haven't seen in a long time. It's so great to see your faces. To those that I talk to every now and then, it's good to see you again. So we're going to get started tonight. And we're going to ask Pastor Amy. Back to those that I haven't seen in a long time. Sorry. You're kind of going in and out. I don't know if it's me or. So we're going to ask Pastor Amy to start us out with prayer tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you. Thank you, we Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your grace, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your keeping power on today, oh God. Father God, you kept us from seen and unseen dangers, Lord God. So God, we just appreciate it. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you, God, because you're such an awesome God. Yes, God. Father God, we continue to praise you because of who you are, God. The angels cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So God, on tonight, we just cry, holy, holy, holy. But Father, you are truly holy. You are truly righteous, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that your character is one of gentleness and of grace, Lord God. So God, we yes, thank God. you, Lord God, that your word says your grace and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Yes, so Lord God, we thank yes, God. you for that in a mighty way, God. Father God, as we embark on this new endeavor, Lord God, to do the conference online, God, we ask you to bless our time together, Lord God. Let everything we do be done, decency and order, Lord God. But Lord God, let your anointing rain afresh, oh God. Father mm -hmm. God, the songwriter said, rain down on us, oh God, rain now, Lord God, that your power will be manifested in and through us, oh God. That those that are in the listening, Lord God, will be saved, set free and delivered, God, for there is power in your word. Father God, yes, I thank God. you, Lord God, for the word says we overcome by the word of our testimony, God. Yes. So God, let our testimony be true. Yes, Let God. it be honest. Father God, we thank you. We love you. And we uh, we praise you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Ladies, it is so good to see you. And like I said, we, we've been doing this for a couple of nights. The first night we talked to women who wanted to tell about the tragedies that they've experienced in our lives. And then last night, the subject was how I got out of the trenches. So we talked each night and we had them to talk about a specific subject at the end. And at the end of each day, we asked them a question and they were supposed to think about that question. And what that question is meant to do is to help them to learn when they're ministering to others, when they're allowing they have to help them to minister to the person that's waiting way. So tonight, I, we wanted to talk to you guys about the conference and where you are now since your time speaking six years ago. Because it's six years. This is our sixth year. Wow. And wow. you guys were in the first group of people that spoke at the conference first group and it's amazing to see all these faces and I know that some amazing things have happened in your lives so what Michelle wanted to bring you here tonight for is to talk about where you are in your life right now and how the conference impacted you when you spoke and in your life since you've left okay so that's what we're going to do I know some of you are, are repeat speakers and you spoke a couple times and, and just haven't been back in a while, but still, we want to know how the first conference impacted your life and how you're where you are right now with things. And we can start out with um, April. Let's start out with you. And the reason I chose April is because I remember the very first conference. April was the first person I saw when I walked in the door because I was late. I was out of place. I was out of pocket. I was <laughs> and they had already started dancing. And when I opened the door, there she stood in all her glory. And they blessed us tremendously. They set this thing off. You guys orchestrated the beginning and you guys set it off and it just blew, blew up from there. So I just want to hear about you, April, and what's going on with you right now. Well, to God be the glory, and I had a feeling you were going to say me, because <laughs> I'm sitting over here like nervous, um, but um, 
so much has happened um, since the conference, for sure. Um, whenever I was at the conference in the beginning, I was kind of in limbo at that time, not really knowing what I should be doing and what I was going to be doing spiritually. Um, dancing, um, I, I knew that that was something that God had called me to do, but I also knew that there were other things that God had called me to do as well. Um, so I was in a place where I was really trying to figure out what is that thing that God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was actually also in limbo as far as my church was concerned. Um, mm -hmm. I was at a ministry that I had been in for 13 and a half years. And um, I was in limbo there as well. I had been visiting another church and was thinking about leaving the ministry that I was at um, because I did not feel at the time that I was growing. Um, and I was wrestling at that time because I was uh, just battling with the fact of, um, can I outgrow a place? Um, maybe I wasn't getting everything that I needed. I still loved my pastor. I loved my first lady. And we actually had a more of a personal relationship. So it was very tough for me um, because um, it was personal and spiritual at the same time. So that was a battle for me as far as trying to figure out what was going to be the best thing for me spiritually. Um, I did end up leaving that ministry and going to another ministry where I feel like I ended up growing tremendously. Um, I was not dancing as much. I ended up doing more of mentoring and teaching um, dance rather than dancing. So I went to that ministry and actually Latonica, who min ministers with me, um, actually went to that ministry as well. And we helped them get their dance team off the ground. Okay. Um, and so um, we helped them get their dance team off the ground. And then we had a ministers in training class there. And um, I stepped in and actually stepped forth and said, okay, I'm gonna take this ministers in training class, um, which was a big step for me because again, I was battling with what I was supposed to be doing. I knew that God had called me um, in, in several areas, but I was battling with the standpoint of, you know, do I want to be a minister? Do I want to take this class? And I did. And it was the best thing that, that I've done um, probably to date, because I feel like um, I, I play it safe all the time. So once I find something that I find a niche in that I'm good at, that I feel like I'm called to do or whatever, I stick there. I don't step out and go anywhere else out of fear. Um, and that was a big step for me to step into that realm and actually take this class and actually accept the challenge of, uh, the challenge that God had put before me to become a minister. Um, okay. and so, um, it, it, like I said, it was the best thing that I've ever done, um, to date. Cause I feel like at that point, I kind of told the enemy that, um, I got this, you know, no longer will you keep me in fear. Amen. Um, so, um, so that's kind of where I am right now spiritually. I'm active in that ministry. Um, and my pastor and first lady are very supportive. Um, I feel like, again, that it's a place where I'm growing, um, where I'm able to use the, um, the things that God has given me to actually um, further the kingdom. Um, from a, I, I know Michelle put on there about um, from a professional standpoint and um, from a personal standpoint. And so from a, prof a professional standpoint, I actually have stepped out as well. Um, so um, I work for a company that I've worked for for over 22 years. And I was at a property, um, my first property managing, because I manage um, apartment communities and my first property managing um, was with this company. And I had been um, at this particular property for seven years. And another property came available, a luxury resort style property that is double the units that I was managing before. And I actually took a leap and um, took, took a manager's position at this particular property. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big step for me as well because they had offered me two other properties prior to now that were larger than what I was on. And I just, I, I didn't feel confident that it was, t the timing was right. Um, and so uh, now I felt like the timing was right. I jumped in and I jumped in head first. It's been a challenge, but I've been up for the challenge, walking in it and walking in it with no fear, walking in it with God. So it's been, um, it, it's been good. Um, from a personal standpoint, there's been a lot, <laughs> a very lot that's, that's gone on. Um, but the biggest thing I have to say from a personal standpoint is that now I feel like that I'm really in a place where I'm truly trusting God. 
um, where I'm stepping out and I'm doing things that I would have never done before. Um, okay. Taking on new positions, um, making decisions, um, making decisions that truly make me happy. Um, yeah. and I feel like that for a long time, I've lived for others and I've lived to make others happy. And I don't mm -hmm. think that I've ever really sat back and really focused on, okay, April, what makes you happy? I had discarded a lot of my dreams, a lot of my aspirations. And I feel like now that I'm walking and picking those back up um, and moving more in a direction of, okay, God, what is it that you would have for me to do? What is it that you are looking for me to do to prosper the kingdom? Um, and uh, whether that be out in the community, at my church, at my um, job, wherever, um, because I find that I'm making the biggest impact right now at my job. Um, mm -hmm. I have a staff of um, 10 right now. And so I feel like right now I am making the biggest impact there. And just and, and the biggest impact is really just in character. Yes. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I am right now. And I'm in a place where I, I feel like I'm really, truly enjoying life. Um, I'm realizing now that I'm in a place that I'm truly enjoying life. I, I thought before that I was enjoying life, but I really realize now that I am enjoying life. And I think it's because I'm being fulfilled. Um, and so that's where, that's where I am. How did the conference impact you? You, you participated several times. So mm -hmm. tell me how the conference impacted you over the years. So the, the one that impacted me the most, I think um, would probably be um, the one that I spoke at, um, okay. that probably would impact, impacted me the most. And not because, not because I, because I spoke, but because I spoke, um, uh, because it's not something that I would have ordinarily done and mm -hmm. I did it. And again, I felt like that was another milestone for me. Yes. And Thanks. then just the togetherness, just the togetherness of the women and just the um, just meeting all of you guys and still being able to see you guys on Facebook and, you know, all of that. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a great thing. After six years, we're still able to get on here, talk to each other, speak and, you know, all of that. And so it's that's it's just great. Amen. Amen. So this is what we've been doing the last couple of days. When they get done, we give them their snaps. <laughs> So we're giving them their snaps. Amen. <laughs> you, April, it's so amazing to see you and hear everything. I will say that you have been a blessing to me every time. Every time. It was amazing. My daughter loves dance, and all she would talk about is all the dance is going to be there this time. You know, <laughs> really enjoyed the ministry that you guys presented to us. So thank you, April. And, you. Thank and you. Like you said, Michelle wants to know where you are professionally, where you are personally, you know, as, as related to what you were doing then and what you're doing now. I know you ladies have a lot going on. So in keeping in fashion with Michelle, you guys have seven to 10 minutes to talk. And April, you did so well, you had two minutes left. So. <laughs> Dewana Eubanks on here, Dewana. Can you come forth so you can speak about your journey with the Complete Woman Conference? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. So how is everyone doing? All right, all right. Everybody's muted, I believe, but we're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the conference that impacted me the most was the one, the very first one I attended. And I think it was the, the second one that they had had, but it was the first one I attended. And I actually got to take a look at myself and to see what I had become as a woman. Not as a mother or a professional, but just as a woman, just as a woman for who, for a woman that wants to know God, but the things that I was participating in was not one who wanted to know God. So it's like having two sides. Verbally, I want to know God, but what I did, it didn't have, nothing, didn't have God in it. So that was my most impactful conference and that's when my journey actually started and uh it was hard i'm not gonna lie it was hard to let go of a lot of things and i and me i'm very verbal so it was i had to learn how to you know to keep my mouth closed and sometimes you just have to take some things with a grain of sand and so with that journey i began to st actually study for myself not just to know so i can be proficient in the knowledge of the word of god but to know it for myself and to how to apply it to my life. 
So that's where I started. And I'm still on that journey. Some things have changed. I am now currently a minister in training at my church at First Baptist of Graham on the Derek Thorpe. I'm a minister in training. So that's, and I, I'm leading Bible study. I'm leading Sunday school. I'm actually helping lead the prayer line. So that's where I'm at with, with walking with God. Please pardon my dogs. They, they heard something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at with my walk with God. I have uh, learned how to set aside time for me because I was having, I was struggling with setting aside time for just me and God. You know, you get so busy with church and and, and you're doing a good work, but you've got to have that time that you pour back into yourself because you cannot depend on everybody to pour back into you. Um, on my job, I am one of the leading ones that they come to for prayer. And uh, if there, if something's going on, someone to come by, um, uh, Ms. Mace, can you pray for me? Uh, I'm on this side of retirement, which means I have about six, seven more years and I can retire. And um, it's just to hear myself, to hear me talk about me right now is, is kind of different because I'm so used to talking about everybody else. But, but my journey is just It's all right. Yes, there are hurt feelings that happen, but mm -hmm. When you move, which when you're moving with God, you have to uh, you have to um, do what the Spirit tells you to do, and so that's basically it. that's basically where I'm at um, with my journey, with my professionalism, um, with my walk. Uh, everywhere I go, I try to encourage somebody about Jesus. Just let them know that yes, it's hard right now, but you can make it. I made it. Oh. And you know, I've, I've done some things. I know I'm, I'm working on a, doing a um, it's a sister circle, and they've asked me to come and, and, to, and to talk and to teach about soul ties and being single in middle age. So, you know, so I'm working on that right now. Um, I'm working on that, and that's going to happen when the pandemic is over. But the, my walk has just been... Hey, my walk has just it, 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 it. I understand when they say now that it that it's tedious. I understand that when they say now that it's tedious because a lot of things you have to swallow. Uh, yeah. That I was before, I wouldn't have swallowed it. Mm. Fighting tooth and nail. We've been fighting tooth and nail. So that's where I'm at with my journey. And uh, it is, and, and every day it gets a little bit easier because I, when I don't know what to do, I just stand still. Sometimes I cry, sometimes I, I read the words, sometimes I pray, or sometimes I sing, just, or I maybe call somebody to help me. So that's where I'm at now. Amen. Thank you, Dewana, for, for your input. We thank you, and we're glad that God is still leading you and opening doors for you in this journey. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 So we're going to keep it moving. Um, at this time, we're going to move on to Miss Missy, Miss Tawana. <laughs> Tawana, you have to unmute yourself, sweetheart. All right. So let's hear about your journey and where you, where you were and where you are. Well, first of all, I'm trying to shake this nickname, Missy. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've outgrown it, but you know, it just won't go nowhere. Um, <laughs> so, well, no, um, it's, it's wonderful to see you guys again. Um, where I was, I know I only got a few minutes and y'all know I'm a talker, so I'm gonna try to uh, stay within my time limit. Um, when I first spoke, it was at the first conference, I spoke at the first two conferences and during that time, um, my life, like <laughs> the best way to describe my life is that um, the carpet had been pulled out from under me. Amen. Um, I was in the midst of a medical retirement um, from an almost 20-year career in the Army. 
Um, it was something that I did not want, but had come to accept. Um, I realized that I was not only grieving the loss of a career, but I was still grieving the loss of my son um, who had passed away in 2007. Um, I was having an identity crisis. I remember um, Miss Letitia, she, her um, first, uh, the first time she spoke and I felt like it, that was me, you know, she pulled the mirror out and was telling us to look at ourselves in the mirror. I yeah. was, that, that was me. Um, and I think also, I can't remember her name, but I know she's from Winston Salem. She spoke and she had pulled the bag out and was unpacking her clothes. Yes. Unpacking. Yeah. Um, and I remember it was another message talking about pivot. So I, the fact that I remember those messages let you know, you know, how much it impacted me because all of those were for me. Um, and it pretty much explained where I was at that time of my life. Um, losing my career, Except I think um, God, the, at one point God had me to speak about um, a message that he gave me specifically was that um, there's a difference between what you do and who you are. And I had put so much of my identity into what I had done in my life. Um, I didn't know who I was. And so that was the beginning of my journey um, in learning who I was, but I, I realized that I had to peel back the layers of all of these different identities that I had created for myself to cover up the trauma that I had experienced in order to get to the root cause of my issues with my identity before I could figure out who I was. Um, and that pretty much sums up what my life has been over the last six years. Um, I was living in El Paso, Texas. I moved from El Paso, Texas to Fort Worth, Texas. Started working with children, which was something that I was not trying to do, but I, that was a part of, um, I think like one of the last steps of my healing as far as um, um, being able to, to truly process my son's death was to be able to get involved with children again. Um, and I got my master's degree in social work. I'm now a licensed um, master social worker, pursuing my clinical social work license. Um, I moved from Texas to Northern Virginia, just on a whim, like came to a friend's promotion ceremony, got off the plane and was like, I'm moving. And everybody was like, you crazy. <laughs> and I was like, I'm moving. And before I, I was going on a trip to Thailand for 12 days, I went on the trip uh, before I left to go on the trip, I applied for several jobs and within 48 hours had interviewed and received two job offers before I got on the plane. So I knew, okay, God, it's time for me to move. Um, and so I came back from Thailand. I moved here, um, settled, got settled in here. And another part of my journey began where I am realizing that I've gotten used to a certain culture, um, a certain type of people in a certain culture in a certain environment. And God is opening me up to um, other environments, other people, other culture, and I don't like it, but it's part of my process, part of my journey, I'm getting used to it. So um, that's what I've been doing professionally. Spiritually, I, I'm still trying to figure out who I am. I'm still trying to figure out who God created me to be. I know that um, my ministry is connected to um, the work that I'm doing, but I'm still figuring it out. Um, and so that's kind of where I am spiritually. Amen. Give her her clamps. Give her, she brought out some really pivotal moments in, in the conference, the first conference, the pivot, the mirror the bags. I mean, those are things that stood out from everyone. Yeah. When we had the questions afterwards for people that were leaving, those were pivotal moments for them too. Those were things that they took away from and learned from. Letitia, I will tell you that I use that mirror with my clients now. We'll talk about that a little later when I tell my, my story, but we, I, th that is so powerful. It was so powerful for so many people there. And I hear about it from people that are, re are repeat 
attenders all the time. So you guys are amazing, amazing. All right, we're gonna move on, move on. So Michelle, you have um, Rachel's information. Hey, Rachel, I know you can't talk right now. She's on here with us, but Michelle has her information that she's gonna convey. Okay, hi everybody. I thought she was gonna save me to last, but anywho, I don't mind. Rachel, my most memorable World Conference with Rachel was the time that my cousin Bernard touched Laura and Rachel and they were both laying in the floor after the conference. I, he touched them both and they, and they went down. But um, Rachel said that the inaugural, um, the inaugural conference found me dropping the mic when I uttered the words preaching. But she said, but but she was saying preaching though, but I remember that. This mm -hmm. was my first public profession of of my call to preach. I was good and shocked, but accepting the path of that God was about to take me down. I was licensed to preach in 2015, been evangelizing through work as a as a psalmist and worship leader all around the country, served as a minister of worship at Ebenezer UCC in Burlington, and as a worship leader and a a worship team made it to praise, preaching from the pulpit all over as well. Since moving to Las Vegas, continuing the same work in ministry and singing at conferences and events as well as at the Mountaintop Faith Ministry is one of the one of the Judah Ministries praise and worship teams. Currently, currently I'm working on re she's currently working on recording in the studio right now. Amen. That's good. That's that's Miss Rachel, but she had a tooth pull, so she's not feeling well at all. Okay, well, Rachel, thank you for tuning in, and we'll be praying for you and your complete healing during this process. And and we thank you for all the things that you yes, I say imparted in us during this process as well. My most my biggest memory from her, and it's probably silly, but it's just me, is when she pulled her bra cup out. I remember that. <laughs> Now that for me was, was and, but she taught about that. And it showed me that for me, when I walked away from that, I was like, I don't have to hide anything. I don't have to hide from people. I can be who I am and be accepted. So that was something, cause I was dealing with insecurities and different things like that in my own identity crisis. So that was a pivotal moment for me. So <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. We're going to move to Miss Amy. Pastor Amy, let's talk about what's going on with you and how it impacted you. I remember Pastor Amy, I had never met her, had never talked to her before that day. All, a lot of us had talked and prayed together and all that kind of stuff. But Pastor Amy, I didn't know who she was. But when I walked in that door, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. It was, she just set it off immediately and it was on fire all the rest of the night. So Pastor Amy, you you have the mic. <laughs> um, the first conference I attended, um, Michelle walked into, I, I, I don't know where we were, but she just asked me, will you do the conference? And I said, yes. Didn't know what I was walking into. Um, I just said, yes. Um, so the first conference was, it was, it was a door, I think. It was a door for me. Um, I was already pastoring at the time of the conference, um, but it, it helped me to continue the walk as a pastor. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but my walk with God has been a continual process since then. Um, it was only actually until a couple of months ago that I actually came out of hiding. Um, Sister Letitia and I are involved in a, a compilation, a book compilation, Our Stories, His Glory, and it was in that process, and, 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 and I jumped that far because it was in that book process that I truly, 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 truly became naked and unashamed. Amen. Um, Amen. So we're talking six years from the first conference it took till now to me, for me to fully grab hold of who I am. Not only who I am, but who God is in me. Um, but it took, um, and Letitia uses this term a lot, peeling an onion. Um, so it took 
peeling, and I think uh, Tawana mentioned it as well, peeling away layers of ourselves. And the conference, I think, initiated that, um, the peeling away of layers. I think the conference initiated it. Um, so uh, I appreciate the conference in that aspect that it did open the door up for the peeling to begin. But again, I say it took six years for me truly to take off all the layers. So even while pastoring, I was still hiding. Even while ministering to others, I was still hiding. That's good. Even while, you know, professing God, doing all the works of God, I was still hiding behind what had happened a long time ago. And, and that's the key to the, the, the complete women's conference is, is dealing with our past to move into our future. Amen. So Amen. It, it took peeling away those things, those layers, and writing this book or being part of this book compilation that helped me now to be confident in who I am. Yes. So no longer can you pump me. If I can use that, no longer can you pump me into making me question who I am. Come on now. Because for so long, people could pump me. I, I would be in a room and I knew who I was in God. I knew what God had called me to do. But yet, because of the layers that need to go away, I could be pumped. But I, but I can say with unequivocally right now, you can't pump me now. I know who I am. I know who I've been called to do. I know what I've been called to do. And I know who I've been called to. So, so, so that conference for me, that's what it, 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 it started the process. Um, and I too remember Letitia's, uh, the mirror, but I also remember Nishio's pivot. And I think yeah. that was the one that set it off for me was to pivot. To, 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 you know, you don't have to, you may be going in a direction, but you can pivot and turn that thing. So th that one was powerful for me. What else am I doing? I, I'm a pastor of a church, um, still preaching the gospel, still um, helping people find their way um, professionally. Um, I guess my, my pastoring and my work profession go together. I'm an insurance agent, been an insurance agent since 1988. Um, different role now, whereas I used to have my, my customers used to come into the office to meet with me and I could minister to them in that way. Now I'm having to do it subtly over the phone. So, but it still works. So my ministry still works there. Um, but that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. And that's who I am. Amen. Amen. So I, I just want to talk about We'll move on, and I'm going to give myself seven minutes, all right? So um, Michelle and I have known each other for year, 20 plus years, and, and when we, the, the birth of the conference came from just the minimal conversation that we had one Saturday night. I had just went to a program the night before, and they had like a pajama party for women, and it was really nice. They brought in vendors. They had people there, and they had a speaker come in, and she spoke on different things, and then they had like a party. They had a massage room. They had all these different things, and then we spend the night in this really nice hotel. Michelle and I talked about that and potentially allowing that to, that to be the part, but by the time I talked to her two weeks later, it was a conference, and so that's what birthed from that conversation. So my first time coming... I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what God was going to do. I was new in ministry. I was new in a lot of things in my life. And I was living behind um, different masks. I didn't know who I was. I wore the mask of this or I picked up the other mask, trying to keep them straight so y'all didn't see the crooks in them as I talked or as I dealt with you. So I, I was hiding in plain sight. Um, when I got up and spoke, I was so insecure. I wasn't sure of myself. But when I left there the first time, after hearing the words that I heard from a lot of you women in there, just I can put, I have my notes. I looked at them. I could pull out so many different things that I got because I took notes. But it was it was a pivotal point in my life because then I started fighting. I was in school. I was working hard. I, my marriage was struggling. My Raising my children wasn't going the way I thought it was going to be. Everything in life looked different than what I thought it was supposed to be. 
at that point, but that was a pivotal point in my life where things started to change, but that didn't stop the enemy from being mad and trying to attack me. Through the years, I've gone through different things. My husband went to prison. You might not know that, but he did. He went to prison. My, my life was turned upside down because of that, losing different things, having severe health issues. You know, it's just been one thing after the other. But guess what? In it all, in everything that happened, God lined up other things strategically so they could happen for me to move into place. I have my own business now. We live in a neighborhood that I used to ride around and look at when I first moved here to Columbus and say, I want to live there. I want a house over there. You know, we used to, well, even when we got married, we would ride and be, and I'd be like, God, I know I ain't gonna never live over there. But guess what? He worked it out. God is so amazing. He, uh, even with the ministry piece, I never thought that I would want to talk to people one-on-one and be able to really speak truth to them and help them. Even with me having a, a, a license, being a licensed independent social worker, I never thought that I would be able to do that, but that's my ministry. He took me from the church that I was going to. He showed me things there and he removed me from that place because my my business is my ministry. I minister to people every day about God, about what he can do and how he can change their lives. And he's so amazing. He's so amazing. And I know he's not done with me yet because there's so many other things that he's given me to do. So that's what how the conference impacted me. It gave me my voice. It gave me my voice and every one of you ladies in that process, everybody from beginning to end, we knew nothing about each other except that we knew how to pray when we got there that day because we had been praying together. But when we started speaking, he lined it up where everything fell into place. Each message fed off the next message and he rolled that thing in. And he's been doing that from day one. Every conference is the same and it's amazing. So I know he is a part of this process. So that's what the Complete Woman Conference has done for me. It's made me naked, but not ashamed. Amen. 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 So... This, this, this is an awesome thing. Awesome, 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 awesome. I love you ladies, really. If I never said it before, I'm saying it to your face now. I do love you and miss seeing you, Miss Tawana. <laughs> All right, next we have the powerful Miss Letitia Nicole coming before us to talk about her experience with the Complete Woman Conference. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, man. First, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be a part of this process from the beginning. And it ain't no end to the end is the end, right? So again, thank you for that, Michelle. I thank you. Um, wonderful visionary. And so at the beginning, the first conference, my God. So I remember that day. I remember the process because I remember praying with with you ladies before the conference even started, right? We were coming together and we were praying, we were praying, we were building each other up and building um, the kingdom up with the word of God that was, and, 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 and we were edifying one another that was fit for the occasion. So I feel like we was strengthening each other and, and, and speaking confidence into one. Yes. And I remember at the time I had been, um, I was a uh, nursing home administrator. I had just taken, taken on a building that was in severe trouble. I mean, trouble, right? Um, one star was being getting ready to be closed down and I took it over. And as um, soon as I get there with you guys, I remember the state walked into my building on a Friday, right? I remember that and I had to leave. And But I said, I will be back. I remember that because I said it in the name of Jesus. They're going to leave on this day. They ain't going to be there for three days. I'm going to come back. And I remember speaking those words into the atmosphere and driving back to Durham and looking at that state survey and letting know, honey, I got somewhere to go. You need to finish today. I know she's like, who she thinks she is? I am a, a child of God. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so she stayed there till 11 o'clock. That night, which is unheard of, normally they take day, days, right? And um, she finished up her investigation. It was uh, unsubstantiated, and I came back. I remember. 
And another thing I remember about that time is I don't remember about what I said, but I can just see myself on the floor reaching for the hem of the garment. Yes, I and remember. I, 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 can, I can see that. I can see it. Um, and even now, I mean, I, it was because I was talking about the woman with the issue, right? The issue of blood. But as the years um, went along, God showed me that it's not, it, 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 we may have issues, but then they tar- it turns into heart conditions. Yes. Uh, if you better catch that. And so um, during the years, my heart changed. Okay. I end up um, becoming a minister. I was a minister in training. Um, and at the time, I think I had two books. Um, and now I have five. I, I, I just, All right. and, and so God, thank you. Praise God. Um, and God just, just told me it wasn't just for me. It was for other people. So he gave me our stories, his glory. So that's what I'm doing now. And that was part one. And it's going to keep going because women have stories. Men have stories that need to go out. So that's where I was um, in my spiritual walk was building my faith and realized that I am a weapon of mass destruction. Um, (laughs) Being that I speak life against the enemy's lies. And my faith was built from that conference until now because I had to look in the mirror first. And then each conference and every every time I'm able to speak and I'm able to bring the mirror and I'm able to speak into the mirror and have the women speak into the mirror, have the little girls speak into the mirror. God not only told me and showed me who I was in him, but what I can do through him. And, and, and from that, my confidence has been built. It's not just, hello, my name is Letitia Nicole, and I speak life. And my mission is to help women and girls conquer their fears so they can be all that they were designed to be. Is now, I am here to do the work that God has given me to do to help you conquer your fear so you can be who he designed you to be and see yourself the way he see you. Now I'm like, ah, it ain't, it, it, it's not like, hello. I'm the Mary Poppins. No, no I, I, it's, I am a weapon against mass destruction. And I own it now. I, I, I know who I am and, and I know I'm, I'm learning and, and I'm, a, I'm a leader that can be led. I sit up under still the woman of God of Unfell in Love Christian Church, my pastor Rose Thomas, and I'm being taught, right? Because a leader that can't be led will go rogue. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. I, you better I, say that. You better I, say that. I, I praise God for my the, my pastor, my my spiritual mom, and 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 I realized that this walk wasn't meant to be easy because that oil is expensive, and so <laughs> um, uh, so I'm really excited about that because it's souls. And the kingdom of God is at hand. So yes, I um spiritually I I'm growing. I'm I'm even I'm I'm, I'm even understanding. Uh, you couldn't have called me an evangelist or a minister. I will call my pastor. They got minister on the on the um, program because I'm Letitia Nicole and I just speak life, um, daughter. Um, you are who you are. Wait a minute. They're calling me evangelist and you are who you are. So God mm-hmm. showed me I walk in a fivefold and it's okay. I ain't, I ain't there yet, but I'm getting there. And so it's like you, you have these gifts and you have to sit down and you have to be taught. So I'm, I'm in prophetic school right now and, and learning these gifts so I can go out. And when I go out, I'm not going to come out by myself because he said, go out two by two because you need a witness. Right. And so you got to calm me down. Cause you know, I'm a preacher. You know, how I preach now. I even <laughs> So just, just say time when it's time. So I, will. so I know it's all in, in, in so that was uh, spiritually, um, but professionally, I'm still a nursing home administrator, even though I stopped working for two years um, because I went in a network marketing company, did really well. We ended up buying a beautiful home, doing some nice things and I stopped working, but my calling, I'm still a nurse. My calling is in people. And so um, I had, had gone back March 23rd um, back to that same home and all hell broke loose. COVID, right? Um, t- um, just COVID, okay? And so I've been home um, since, <laughs> right? Working from home, but praise God. 
um, still been able to do uh, my businesses. Um, like she said, I have a, we have a new book, um, a visionary of our stories, his glory. But then I have my baby here. I am beautiful for little girls, teaching them strong affirmations so they can shape their reality young so they won't grow up to be bitter women that don't know who they are. I'm helping them know who they are at a small mm -hmm. age, speaking life to the sea. So that's what I've been doing with that. And um, personally, I like men. <laughs> I love men. I love my voice. And can't nobody take it from me because they ain't give it to me. Amen. And I appreciate that God made me the way he made me. Yes. Unique and wonderfully made. And so no longer would I ever pipe down so somebody else can be comfortable. Because I say it all the time. I, I do. We got to stop being punked out of our purpose. That's what I say, right? Ooh, I like we, do. That. we do. And so it's just time for us to come together because the kingdom of God is truly at hand. And I'm going to hush up because I can't help it. But You got two minutes. Oh, praise God. We, <laughs> we, we, we have to unite and we have to love. And I learned that too in these six years. And, and, and if, how can two walk together if they don't agree? And, and I'm, I'm learning to, to position myself with people like-minded. And if they're not like-minded, I don't waste my time because that's the waste of time, okay? It's called a distraction. And so because now I'm confident in me, I can now walk straight, flat-footed without blinking. Yeah, no blink, no blink right now. <laughs> Amen. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, y'all. Give her her snaps, Miss Letitia Nicole. So amazing, ladies, to have you guys on here. Everybody mentioned their businesses. Um, and one of the things that we did last, well, okay, I'm forgetting somebody, Miss Michelle. Why don't you share with us where you are and how your conference has impacted you as well? Can't hear you. All I can say right now is wow. It's truly a blessing, a blessing, a blessing to see everybody. I am, can I say I'm at a loss right now because I'm speechless because I don't know what to say at this moment, you know, and that's odd, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be my missy, but you know, to bottom, but you know, it's just, I, I'm thankful to God that you all had enough faith, not in Michelle, but in the God in Michelle. Yeah, back then I was still cussing and raising hell and talking trash, but you know, that's just who I was then. I didn't know that God had greater in me. And um, I can think back to a conversation because, you know, after the conference was over, Dr. Donald said, Michelle, next year is coming. I said, no, ma'am. I said, I'm one and done. We out. Peace. Jesus said, do one. I'm do one and we done. Ain't no more. But I didn't realize that God had something better in mind for me, you know, and like you all, I had to peel back the layers and the mask and the tears and, you know, you all see me at my best. You see me at my worst, but the blessing is because we're a sisterhood we never judged each other, you know, and that was the type of atmosphere that I still want to create today. But for me just to hear you all talking about what we've learned and how we've all grown spiritually, I'm like, God, this is all you. It didn't have nothing to do with Michelle. And I'm still growing daily. I grow daily and my struggles are like, you know, just like everyone else's. Um, some of you may or may not know, but um, I had brain surgery back in June. I had 48 staples in my forehead from June till until um, August, probably. I got up some days, I didn't know who I was, know where I was. And I thought, well, okay, God, you want me to do anything? I ain't gonna do nothing. So I thought I was still gonna be able to take things easy. But that wasn't what God had in mind for me. I know that's what Michelle wanted to do because it was easy for me to hide behind my scars. It was easy for me to hide behind 
my scars. But God said, Michelle, it's time to keep moving. It's time for you to just keep doing it. So we ended up having, you know, a rig. I mean, not, I'm sorry. We ended up having the human trafficking event in February. I said, okay, God, so what you want me to do? He had already gave us like five dates for this year already. But this walk has not been easy for me, but I give God the glory for you all just sticking with me. Yes, I've been hard. Yes, but because God pushed me, I had to push you. God didn't allow me to get comfortable and sit in my mess because, you know, sometimes we get comfortable in our dysfunction and we make excuses for not doing things. But whenever you are truly obedient and you hear what God say, God will open up doors that you never thought possible. Because when I tell you, you know, I talked to some of you all, I wanted to give up a thousand and million and one times. I did because I didn't think I could do it anymore. I didn't know how to do it. But as I thought about it, I didn't know how not to do it. Does that make sense? That's why we're here tonight. And whenever you're truly sold out doing, doing the will of God, you don't know how not to do something. That's why I don't know how not to pray. And God speaks to each and every last one of us in different ways. And, you know, and it's enough of taking, you know, of, of, of us standing down and just settling because God has called each of us to something greater. And I have to ask you, are you in your greater now or are you just sitting there? Mm. You know, are you just sitting in your stuff making excuses? Because this one, this girl said, Michelle, I can't come on because I got into an argument with my husband. I said, that's your excuse. He said, well, but we got to quit making the excuses and just seeing you all tonight has pushed me to another level. I don't know what everybody gonna get in 2021, but I know what y'all got before. You know, I know what y'all got. <laughs> but I don't know what God is doing. And and I haven't worked since my surgery. I'm like, God, why can't I have me a real paycheck? You know, they cut my money off. You know, me just being Michelle, but he's 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 allowed me to utilize my gifts. He's got me in a whole nother arena that I never thought possible. See, so we have a plan for our life. We want things to go how we want them to. But God always has a plan. And y'all just don't know. When those conferences started, I never knew. And Laura tell you, I never knew. Tawana tell you, I never knew what, what we were going to do. All they would say, that's Michelle and her madness. We don't never know. That's Michelle and her madness. You know, but I appreciate you all sticking with me. I appreciate you all doing the fasting and the prayer. And I've had people to fall off because they didn't want that commitment. I said, you're not committing to Michelle. You're committing to God, you know, and they don't, and people don't understand that. And it's because we were faithful. God is continuing to open doors because I follow all of y'all on social media. And I love to see how God is just pushing y'all and just taking you to that next level, you know, and it's truly I'm honored. I'm honored that God chose me even in my mess. And for somebody that's sitting here watching, maybe on YouTube or even you all, if you're in a place of comfortable, get uncomfortable, okay? If, you, if all your friends doing the same thing, change your circle of friends. It's time for you to reposition yourself during this COVID-19. It's time for you to reprocess, I mean, it's time for you to reprocess your, rechannel your energy to what you're, what you are supposed to be doing. And like Tish said, we are, we are mass destruction. We are weapons. And it's time that you use that weapon for war and not hell. See, because we don't beat each other down as women long enough. And I told the ladies last night, I said, this is who I really am. I love people. I don't know how to do nothing else but just love. I so love and I so love and love don't always come back when you so love, but it's all right. It's all right. And will I say I'm sorry for being so hard? No. <laughs> but it was all in me being out of love because God was pushing me. God was taking, Rachel said, conduits of love. <laughs> God was taking me to the next level so I could do what he's called me to be do. And he knew I was bold enough to say what, what somebody else wouldn't say. He knew I was wild enough to go where he would send me because that's just who I am. I'm just that crazy. And But I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. I don't know what God has in store for tomorrow, but today I know I love y'all. 
I know I got the love of God in my heart and we have impacted so many people with just just how you all spoke life, just how you all danced, how you ministered, how you all were transparent, you know, and how you all allowed me to push that button where you can peel back what you didn't want to peel back, those things that you were hiding from. But see, in doing that, it also grew me because I then had to peel back and, you know, and get and be all right with, with, with myself because I was able to push you. God was pushing me. So I had to do you because God was doing me. He said, Michelle, push her. And I love how God orchestrated. And like Laura said, how every message lined up with each other. Every conference, every message just fell in place. Everything, you know, and it was amazing. And Rachel said, I love each lady, each conference, each experience was necessary. You're right, it was necessary. We had to go through. And Laura would tell you all know when I said conference, hell broke loose. <laughs> hell broke loose and not only in your life but you know mine was the biggest one but but I still trusted God I still but I do I love you all I appreciate y'all like I said just continue to keep me lifted yes I'm on a journey now no I'm not working I have not worked since June but I don't y'all see I'm wearing a wig now because my hair doing something crazy but I don't, it don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? I'm all right with who I am because I know no matter what I go through, God still got my back. And I know I can text, you know, the Laura and the Amy, hey, pray, pray, pray. And I ain't getting no question about well, what you need prayer for. Because when I tell you this walk is easy, because for me to be 52 years old sometime and not know what my name was or having to learn since June, I've had to learn how to walk and how to talk. This has been a journey for me. Since June, I've had to let, you know, I've had to put signs in my house so I would know where I was to remind me to brush my teeth. See, so I didn't hide that, you know, I didn't put that on Facebook. And somebody said, Michelle, you didn't tell me you was going blah, blah, blah. I said, because I don't stay on Facebook. I stay on, on, on Lake Forest Road, you know. But this has been a journey. I said, God, whatever you're doing, I'm glad you chose me for it. However you want me to go, God, I'm going to go because that's what you want me to do. So whenever adversity rides up in you, because it's, it's going to rise and something's going to come, you'll say, God, let your will be done. God, whatever you say, God, I'm good with it and be, and be all right with it. But thank you all from the depths of my heart. And I love you all. I love the old ladies. I love the new ladies. And I love, I love, I love you all. And that's all I got. Amen. You didn't call us old. <laughs> <laughs> you called us old. <laughs> well, the seasoned ladies. You know what? I, I just I got, back on, I got back on to say this, Michelle. Each one of us can attest to the fact, and we know now, that the things we endured were not for us. They were for the ladies we encountered at the conferences, they for, they for every person that we encounter now. So everything that you're enduring, everything that your life or life has thrown at you in the last year, it is all for a purpose. It is all so that somebody else that finds themselves without hope, without direction, with their body uh, turning against them, that there's still hope in what God can do through them if they just trust God in the process. Yeah. Because it's, because it's a process. Your healing was a process. Our coming out of our, our, um, our wounds was a process. So it's all a process to get us to where God wants to take us. Just the other day, I heard God plainly say, and I don't know who this is for, but it's time to cross over. It's time to move from where you are. And to cross over means I have to transition. To cross over means I have to move. To cross over means I'm moving from one state of being, one way of thinking, one way of operating to a new way of operating. Because if you go back to the Old Testament in the book of Joshua, when he told Joshua, take these thy people and cross over, they had to let go of the mentality of being in bondage, amen, to gain what God had for them on the other side in the land of Canaan. He, he says, he says, he says, I'm going to give you houses you did not build. Land 
amen, that you did not plow. I'm going to give you fruit, amen, that you did not plant. So in order for me to gain what God has for me, and Michelle, well, to gain what God has for you, you had to cross over, amen, those things that were sent to destroy you. Glory yes. to God. So all yes. of us have a crossover that we have to do, amen, in order to receive the blessings of God. But when I cross over, I cannot cross over with the same mentality of where I was. When I cross over, I got to go over with the mentality that I can conquer the land. Because here it is. If I don't go over with the mentality that I can conquer the land, God says, I'll send you back into the wilderness. Yes. Somebody better hear me tonight. God says it's time for us to cross over and gain what God has for us. That's why the Complete Women's Conference is so powerful because it is teaching women to cross over. Lord have mercy. I was wondering who that word was for. Glory to God. But, but here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So many of us, glory to God, God says pick up and cross. Because God didn't have them to leave their stuff on the other side. He says, pick up your tent and move. Yeah. So there's some things that you have with you that's got to go over. So every wound that I've suffered, every heartache I've had, every sickness I've gone through, the memory of it has to go with me. Why? Because that way I won't forget what God brought me through. Glory to God. I won't forget what God brought me through. So many times we have preached and told people, don't take it with you. But, but here it is. When the Jesus told the man with the mat, he said, take up your mat. Take up your mat and walk. Why? Yes, the yes. mat was a reminder to him that he picked up what was holding him in bondage. And God says, take it with you. Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. He took the mat with him so he did not forget <laughs> what God brought him from. Because you, you, you know the saying is, if, if, I, if, I, if, if I don't remember my past, I'm doomed to make the same mistakes again. Yes. Mm. So many of us. Yes, Lord. So many of us. And I'm guilty. Have held on to my past, held on to the bondage, held on to those things that wounded, almost crippled, almost killed me, held on to it because I felt safe in it. Come on now. I, I felt safe in the wounds. I felt safe in the heartache. I felt safe in the abuse. I felt yes. safe in the neglect. I felt safe in it all. And God said, I want you to take it with you because I want you to remember where I brought you from. I brought you out of bondage. I'm telling you, you know what? This phone has got to go, right? Right, right? But, but God says, God said, and I just said, I had to tell you that because we have got to, let me get this phone right quick, y'all, because I got to tell y'all this. Hold on one. <laughs> it made me laugh. I'm back, I'm back. But here it is, here it is, here it is. I I'm going to stop, Michelle. I didn't mean to get in all that. Let me just say this. It's all right, it's all right. Y'all got me sweating. That's all right. But God, God says, God says, we got to cross over. So ladies, the Complete Women's Conference, great, wonderful, brought us all a mighty long way, planted seeds in all of us to help us move to where God wants us to be. But now, Michelle Kirkpatrick, it's time to cross over. Yes. God had a new thing that he wants to do through the Complete Women's Conference. You can't do it like you did before. Ah. Six years was great. But the seventh year has to be different yes. than anything you've ever done. It cannot be on the same format. It can't talk about the same stuff. It's time to cross over to the to the freedom that God has granted through the Complete Women's Conference. So don't even think on the same lines of where you were. Don't think on the same lines of the wounds that we had. God says now it's time to cross over. Take Jesus. up your bed and walk. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're crossing Amen. over, Jordan. Amen. And here it is. He told Joshua, be a courageous and fear not, but always
always stay close to the word of God because that's where your strength lies. That's where your victory lies. And that's where your crossover is going to come through the word of God. Amen. I'm done. Yes, ma'am. Amen. You don't preach. Um, Amy, you what you said was just why you were talking, I was just listening. I was about to put something in the um in the chat, but I'm just gonna say it. There is a difference between and it, it, it goes with what you're what you are just saying. There's a difference between sitting on your mat and waiting for it to come and you getting that word to pick it up and take it with you. And that is where I think Amy is coming from. We've been, th this past six years has been about, been motivating people to get up. They've been sitting on their mat. They've been sitting in their bed. And this past six years has been about motivating people to get up. This next phase that you're going through is about people who are going to mobilize and execute. And Amen. so you cannot mobilize and execute if you're not willing to pick your stuff up and move. Come on now, bro. Say that and I'm, I'm out. <laughs> wait, 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 because we, because you must got some prophets up in here. That's what it is. Because what it is right now. The, the thing is, because it's being built off of one word from the other, and so the the, the bridge is already built. Okay, the bridge, but but what are we taking? What seeds are we planting as we go across the bridge? Um, it, either we're gonna be victorious or we're gonna be victims, right? So, so what, what, what I was led to tell you is that if it's not producing fruit and, and fruit didn't have an S, it was the fruits, right? Yeah. And, and I need you, I need you to look real close in your circle. If it's not producing the love, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the, y'all know what I'm talking about, the gentleness. Yeah. If it's not producing mm -hmm. the fruit of the spirit, it's a fig tree that has to be cut down. Come because on now. it's not producing, so you can't take weight across the bridge. You can't take. Mm, my God, you're not going to be able to take the weight across the bridge. Jesus, mm. if it's not planting good seed, if it ain't fruit, it will not multiply. And whatever is not producing, it has to be cut down like that fig tree. Yes, I, it has to. It has to go. So. I don't know who all that was for, but if it's not producing, it got to be cut off. Got to go. Amen. Got to go. Got to go. Amen. Amen. Oh wow. I'm taking. Y'all to kiss me real good. I promise you, all, all over everywhere, I'm kissed. Yeah, you're right. There's some prophets on this line, and I appreciate every last one of you Amen. all. You all just don't know. And it was good for me to be poured into because God knows what, you know, what he's, he's preparing me for. God knows what he's about to take me to. And you're right. And that's just confirmation on some, on some things I've been writing down because of what he's telling me that I should be doing and not to be comfortable in where I'm at now, because see, I don't understand. I didn't understand my brain tumor at all. Didn't make sense to me. I don't understand not working. It don't make sense to me. And yeah, I told Amy, I said, yeah, I want to go back to Michelle, Michelle, but that's not what God said to you. Did, what did God say? And you're right. So I've got to now just sit and allow God to move. I can say, yes, my money was cut off for a little while, but I never went without anything. God still provided me, haven't had any cut off moves, haven't been put out, you know, so God has still been provided. So I've got to remain faithful at what God is saying to me. And yes, he's transitioning me from, from, the, from where I was, the Michelle corporate America working, slaving to where I'm now to where I can serve him and be better service to other people. He's allowing me to do things differently now. And I'm thankful. Like I said, I did understand because I'm in a whole nother area. I've never even saw about, well, why am I over here, God? What you doing? You know me because I'm goofy. But I'm thankful that he chose me. I'm not complaining nor nor am I murmuring. And yes, I am preparing to go to school of theology so I can get my degree because I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. Michelle, I want to be obedient. May I give you this word? Go ahead. You can't take a lot with you. Period. So don't look back. You can't take a lot with you.
Got you. God, I hear you. Because <laughs> all I know is to help and to serve and to give back and, you know, and bring people and, you know, and to help people and give back to people. But I know the season he's taking me to because when I was having surgery and I'm healing, I was by myself. You know, he had me in that quiet time by myself. He had me coloring color books by myself. And that was so he could speak to me. Yes, I had my family around, but he had me to get me by myself. So that much, you're right. Yes, people have fallen off, and I'm not questioning God. I, I did at one time because I didn't know what isolation was. But that's where he has me now. So I received that. And because I'm very, I, I, I love God, and I'm very obedient unto his word. I have no choice but to know I can't take a lot with me. Thank you. Amen, ladies. Amen. Wow. Hmm. Mm. When he shows up, he shows out. Yeah no matter where you are, no matter what it looks like. We all in different places, but he's touching us all in different ways. Amen. 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 I expect no different. <laughs> I expect no different because he is who he is. He proves who he is all the time. He tells us to seek him while he may be found. And he's found right here, right now. Amen. 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 Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That was a word, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> I think it touched everybody in here. Might have been for her, but I think we got some some of the remnants of it too. It rubbed off on me a little bit too. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Tawana, mm. don't let anybody put you in a box. Mm. You're not like anybody else. There's nothing about you that's like anybody else. That's been my struggle. That has it has it's been my struggle. And that's why I said I had to I had to get through the layers, understand what was driving me and motivating me to present myself to be what I was presenting myself to be. Um in order to understand who I am. And I'm still, like I said, I'm still figuring it out, but I appreciate that word because that's, that is confirmation. I, I am different and I'm not, before I felt like I had to be, you know, something of or representative of everything that was around me. I was taking in bits and pieces of every, Thing that was in my environment trying to create who I thought that I should be versus me just accepting that I am who I am and little bit by little bit I'm learning how to like Letitia Nicole said love me I'm learning how to embrace who I am I am learning um my that my differences are my superpowers they they are what make me who I am and they don't have to be changed in order for me to fit in. I, for so long, I've been driven off of external validation to the point that when that external validation was no longer there, I fell apart. I lost my mind. Um, and just like where Michelle is now, I have had to be on the backside of the mountain tending to sheep where nobody knew where I was at while everybody else was getting their blessing. You know what I'm saying? I was on the backside of the mountain being taught. Um, and, and that part of my journey is, is still is ongoing. Um, but I know that when, when it's time for me to move into the next phase, whatever the next phase is, um, I'll be ready, I'll be prepared. I'm no longer, um, somebody used to tell me, I remember my grandmother saying that I wouldn't let grass grow under my feet. And then another person used to tell me that I moved in leaps and bounds. And I am learning how to take it one step at a time. 
even if that means that grass is growing under my feet, even if that means that I feel like I'm moving slower than everybody else. Like I've learned how to take my attention off of everybody else and just pay attention to my walk, my journey and what is going on with me. And it has been such a blessing um, because until you're able to do that, you can't embrace who you are. You can't accept who you are. You can't love you. Um, and that's just where I'm at. And that's why I say I'm still figuring it out, but um, thank you so much for, um, for that, that word and that confirmation because you, what you have done is you have solidified um, each step that I've taken up to this point. So praise God. Praise God. Amen. Woo. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. You ladies. I knew y'all was bringing y'all's bags, which y'all unpacked every last one. <laughs> Moved in and got comfortable. Amen. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. So one of the things as we move forward um, through the night that we've been doing is having the people that are listening, if they, you know, want to say a, a few things, I know it's getting late, but if one or two of you guys want to speak up about your experience um, maybe Latasha and Helen, if you guys could speak up on your experience um, over the past couple of days, um, just a couple of minutes. Latasha, you can go first. Great. Um, well, I can say that, you know, just being involved with you ladies is just a blessing. Um, you know, it's really good when you can, you know, connect with other people that have the same like mind or the same like Christian mind. Um, one thing about me, like, you know, as a couple of you have spoken about, um, trying to locate your purpose or trying to locate, you know, what, what God wants you to do. What happened to me a few years ago, actually two years ago, to be exact, New Year's Day, 2018, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do something totally different, you know, because we all have these, you know, facade of, uh, of New Year's resolutions. And this, in that particular year, I said, you know what, I need something different because I can't remain the same. Even though I might have all of the things that I, you know, wished and prayed for, that I had everything that I wanted, I was still empty. But when I decided to ask God to utilize me, everything changed from night to day, literally. My desire to drink was no more. Everything that I had planted in my heart that I desired to do, God started to unravel those things right before me. Literally, mm -hmm. you know, I started meeting people that were in line with everything that I wanted to do. So with everything that I was maybe so-called afraid of doing, such as public speaking, I was thrown right into that. See, God would just make you uncomfortable in order to bless you. And, you know, and when I decided to ask God to use me, everything started to open up for me. Everything started to get big for me. And that became like a real blessing for me that everything started to change. And, you know, that's one thing that, you know, that when you are trying to find your purpose, you need to look at your foundation. So Good. when you're trying to look for your purpose, you need to look back at your foundation. What built you up in the first place? Mm. God built you up in the very first place. When he saw you, he said, what? You are a good thing. He said that you were good. So that was one thing that I had to take, you know, for myself. And that has really pushed me over the past two years that, you know, what God is just continuing to do great and awesome things. And even though some things are uncomfortable, they were necessary. So, you know, so that's one thing that I have just found. And that's how I came to this conclusion to meeting you, Michelle, you know, via <laughs> online, you know, saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I'm going to, to continue to do more speaking engagements and meet you and et cetera. But due to the environment, this is what it is. But that is OK, because we're still um, doing God's work. We're still doing Amen. God's, you know, purpose. So mm -hmm. that's just an awesome thing. And I look forward to more things coming through you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Ms. Helen? Yes, ma'am. Well, I just want to say being here for these past couple of nights, and ladies, I apologize for my lateness. I was determined to get here uh, to listen in for the other ladies who have been here uh, with Miss Michelle and, and Laura for these years. Uh, the thing of it is with me, 
I'm very honored to be a part of it because I have watched uh, Miss Michelle for years. I didn't get to attend the conferences in person, but when she put out this time, if anyone would like to come and speak, and for me, it was the appointed time because like I had mentioned to her, where I'm up here in High Point, everyone looks at me as being so strong. Sister Helen, you so strong, this and that and the other. But like my mom used to say, you may see the glory, but you don't know the story. They don't see the times when I'm in there fighting off the enemy and, and speaking God's word over everything because I'm fighting for my life. Mm, and the thing of girl. it is people sometimes do not understand and I come to a point in my life, I love women, but in the, I have a very small circle, praise God. But at the same time, I cannot allow to be pulled down and be emptied and not get replenished for myself. And it's not a selfish thing, you know? And, and as I listen, I like to listen. You know, I made a teachable ministry myself. I'm the type of person, it's like one thing about it, you can say you're a bag of chips, but you can get crushed. You got to be taught. You got to be connected <laughs> like that. Like attitude of wanting to learn because I don't know it all. I'm, I'm not never going to say I don't know it all. Just like when I came here, if you're in leadership or in authority, you got to get underneath authority and respect people's houses. And to me, this is a different house. You can't come mm -hmm. in and act a certain way. I'm very humble. I'm very honored. Whatever God has for it, you know, if, if I were to be called on, I give God the praise because I'm nothing without him. Nothing. And I appreciate, even though I didn't get here right at eight o'clock, I did, I did not pass any stop signs, but I was <laughs> determined to get here to hear a word because to me, it's very important. And I do appreciate the transparency. I appreciate the oneness, I appreciate the non-judgmental because I'm very misunderstood because I do be to myself a lot. I do talk to God a lot. And I do appreciate a certain not giving, not taking away from the circle I have, but sometimes you could be around people for years and they still don't understand you. I mean, it's okay if they don't. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate being here this evening. I talked about it even on my women's page, how the women that I have been experienced in two nights has really oh blessed God. me. And I've invited men and you know, you can't make people go, but at the same oh time, like it was said Amen. tonight, you know, crossing over, he said, let's go to the other side and I'm going to the Amen. other side. If you want to sit there and like she said, not pick up your mat, that's on you, but I'm, I'm going. Amen. So, Amen. 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 Thank you, God. This has been amazing, ladies. What y'all think? Give it a yeah. give it. And snap and praise if you can. <laughs> Cats, Amy, you just cut loose on us. Letitia, come in. Tawana, come in and do their thing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Wow. With her testimony, I wish she could have danced for us because y'all be dancing all over the place if she was up. Amy, oh, you forgot about Paulette. No, I, I did okay. not. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I did not. But I just really, really, really have enjoyed everything, everything that we have experience tonight it, it's been amazing it's been amazing each night has been amazing and just leading up to this so miss paulette she beat me to the punch i was gonna ask if you had anything that you wanted to say because you've been there from the beginning you've been watching but you've been there yes i just wanted to, I just wanted to say that I've, I've enjoyed both nights i forgot about last night because i was on bible study with my church and we didn't get off until like 8 15 so i forgot about it but I've enjoyed the two nights that I've been on. I really Amen. enjoyed it. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yes, you too. <laughs> All right, ladies. So Michelle, you want to do the activity that you did at the end last night with us? Oh, you forgot about Joanne. No, I didn't forget. I just don't want to go over time. So it's okay for yeah. us to go over time. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I paid it for it. Something too. <laughs> Go ahead. She's logged out. She has to get in. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say that I've enjoyed uh, all three nights. Um, mm -hmm. And I love all of y'all. And I mean, I, I, I really truly enjoy my. I'm not a speaker. I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really, it's really been hard. This is my test yeah. because I'm, I don't speak, you know. So, 
I, I, I appreciate you uh, inviting me to come, Shale. I love Amen. you. We got Miss Annie Harrison on here too. Miss Annie, you want to say something? You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Well, what I wanted to say is I greatly, greatly appreciate it um, being a part of this. And I followed along, even in the distance, um, along the years of this Complete Woman Conference, my sister, my cousin, Rachel, uh, different ones that I know of that have been a part of this this whole um, ministry of reaching women and bringing healing and deliverance to women's lives. And um, although I hadn't uh, always physically been there, I think I was at one when it was at the mall. I think I came in there one time and it was a powerful move of God going on. And I saw how God was moving on the women and breaking chains. And Michelle, don't ever question what God is doing with what this vision that he's given you because the the glory that God is going to bring from this mm. is going to be phenomenal it's already a great move of God but the glory that shall be revealed mm. is going to be phenomenal and you're going to see some women's lives touched that you don't even probably won't even ever get the opportunity to meet people's lives are going to be impacted and touched mm -hmm. deliverance is going to come forth Amen. because you being obedient to what god said Thank you. and yeah he, he's taking you through a lot but don't 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 worry about what what you went through i know you don't mm -hmm. but what you went through is about to bring forth a great great glory even in your own life and I just thank God for you, you. opening the door and thank allowing you. those of us who have gone through some things to share a story that will that will aid in what you're doing. Thank so you. we pray much for you, we uplift you, we hold your arms up in this. Amen. And we know that God is going to continue to do some great things. I thank God for everybody that I have, all the people that I know, Helen, I knew her from school and I've always thought she was phenomenal. <laughs> always been a friend a sweet woman sweet young lady even in school and then cousins joanne and all of them rachel i mean it's just it's just a connection there and i thank god for what he's doing so um these women from other ones that came on tonight my god y'all about made me take a wall out <laughs> Woo, yes sir i'm telling you i about took a wall out in here y'all it was hitting some aiming my god the fire that's coming out of you is crazy. Mm. Yes, sir. Hun, I'm in here. I, I got to do my nightcap tonight on Facebook. And I tell you what, you was all in my stuff. I said, no, she ain't all in my thing here. So I thank God for <laughs> the words that you were speaking. Because I was like, God, okay, this is what you really want. And then you come back and dance all up in my stuff. So I thank God for you. So I just wanted to say thank you. And... God bless you. I will love you. Amen. 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 I see Miss Dawn Mitchell on here. Dawn, do you? I can't see your face, but do you want to say anything tonight? Um, I just I, I didn't at first, but I, I guess I'm supposed to. I know we talked about yesterday about as soon as you <laughs> say you want to be a part of something, the devil tax. And I had spoke with um. Miss Michelle when she called me separately and I told her I'm done with lupus and um, I, I it just blew my mind because I've been doing great for two months and I literally got attacked today and I was like wow I didn't I haven't done anything wrong what is this all about but I didn't even think about it and it kind of got me down but after listening to every one of you ladies my heart is so full because I know this is not about me. It's mm -hmm. not going to be for me. I know that I'm already healed, but I know that I can't remember which one who just said it. All these things that I'm going through is for someone else to see because I, I went through it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I can't hide behind my scars and I can't hide behind the condition. I can't be defeated by the depression and anxiety any longer because I know now I have a voice. I have mm -hmm. to be bold, confident, and strong. 
And I can't keep on being this crybaby. I guess she said it best. I can't be punked no more. <laughs> because I know God is getting ready to use me in a special way. And I can't run from it. The more I run, the more he says, no, um, you're going to run to me and not away from me. Amen. I could go on, but that's all I got because I don't, I'm a big crybaby and I'm trying not to cry. It's all right. It's all right. You guys were so it just confirmed everything. And it was like last night was my first one and everything was just right on time, right on time. And tonight everything is right on time. And I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, but I'm true to it. Amen. But it's like the closer I get, it's, 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 it's overwhelming me because it's like, this is real. Amen. There's really supportive, God-fearing, loving, trusting women yeah. that are out there that are to encourage and uplift us. And I've just been asking and saying, God, I can't do this by myself. I know I'm supposed to, but I can't do this by myself. And he has put me in a place just to hear these women saying, you're not going to be by yourself. You just got to get to where I'm, you got to be. And I just thank you guys for that. You know, you can't see my face because I'm hiding <laughs> and I shouldn't be because I'm still dealing with the scars. Mm. It's okay. I'm, so, I'm grateful and I thank you guys so much. Mm. That's all I got. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we we ended the session last night with a special exercise that Michelle did, and I'm going to give her the floor so she can do that tonight because I think it was very what we're trying to do and what everyone has spoke about tonight and the sisterhood, the, the camaraderie that we have together and our love for God and how we pray for one another and uplift each other and take care of each other moving forward. So ladies, I love you and I hope to see you guys soon and talk to you soon. But Michelle, you can have the floor. Rachel raised her hand. Rachel, did you want to say something? I did. And I don't know <laughs> if you all can understand me or not. Bear with me. But I just, Michelle, wanted to just kind of piggyback on what the last sister said. You know, we are not alone. And I know that God has knitted us and bonded us together through this complete women's conference. You know, we say that we are daughters of the Most High King, and we certainly are. We have to believe that with everything that's in us because he has given us each a measure of talent, each a measure of faith, and he wants us to use what he's given us to make the world better, to make women understand who they are in him. Because until they really wrap their minds around and until we wrap our minds around who we really are in Christ Jesus, we will struggle. So we have to believe what he says about us and we have to live up to the name Daughters of the King. And that's what kind of will keep us focused, I believe, on doing what we have to do to become complete women. Mm -hmm. If we keep our eyes focused on God and all that he thinks about us, then why would we sell ourselves short and not think the same about ourselves? Mm -hmm. He's our leader. He's our teacher. He's our master. He's our keeper. He's our savior. He's our heart regulator, our mind regulator. He does all that for us. And we owe him ourselves total and complete. And so we're bonded first as daughters of the Most High King. But secondly, now you have helped us to have a new brand, Michelle. Everybody's trying to brand their business, brand themselves, you know, and get out there on social media. But we as a team of women can now call ourselves the complete women who are naked and not ashamed. And we got to mm -hmm. walk in that. We can't just go to the conference year after year and, and, and so into others, and like Helen Ann was saying, so into others and never get replenished. We got to replenish one another and so into one another so that we can carry this brand that we are now associated with. We're bonded because we claim to be complete women. So I just challenge each and every one to go out there with your brand boldly displayed. You, are, you might not be completely complete. I don't think any of us are until the day of perfection in him, right? Right. So we just keep on pressing towards the mark and we do that together, never alone, but together, keeping our circle, like Letitia said, with those who are like minded, because we're the ones who will build each other up. We are the ones who will enforce in each other that which God believes about us that we can't believe about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we can make this a movement as Michelle has desired to change it from just a conference to a movement a real worldwide movement 
-hmm. of women who are walking towards their completeness. How about that? Maybe we're not in it yet, but we're walking towards it boldly and you can't turn us around and you can't punk us down. We're going to keep moving forward towards the prize. And that prize is wholeness and completeness and ultimately to be with God. And we have to work on it every single day. So wear your brand, ladies. We're, we're branded, right, Michelle? We are yes. complete women. Naked. <laughs> wow. I hope y'all can understand. I'm sorry about my, my tongue and my tooth. Sorry. No, we got you. Thank you, darling. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we miss love you so you, much. Love you. Love you. <laughs> miss all of you, too. We're going to have to move to the conference to Vegas one year, y'all. I'm telling you. Come on. Get the, get the tickets. Uh, amen, Letitia. Y'all get together. And come on out. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Um, again, this has been amazing. I, I never know what to expect, but this conference here amazed me. This was definitely different. So, Amy, you're right, different. So, but last night I had the women to raise your hands and put your hands like this so we can touch the girl that's beside you, touch the woman that's beside you. So you'll know that you're not in this alone. So you'll know that woman that you're touching is, you know, she's, she's, she Um, I will unmute you <laughs> if I can. April, I can't unmute you. I'm unmuted. Okay, would you lead some prayer, please? And y'all, please touch your sister, okay? <laughs> Lord, we just thank you, God. We bless you, God. And we just praise you, God. God, we thank you right now for this sisterhood, God. God, we thank you for the Complete Women's Conference, God. We thank you for what you've done, God, and what you're doing, God. God, we thank you for all the ladies that have poured out, Lord God. But we also thank you, Lord God, for putting in, Lord God. We thank you for putting in and taking out, God. For taking out those things, Lord God, that you needed to take out to cleanse us, God. To get us closer to you, God. To get us closer to our destiny, God. For us to be able to walk where in our destiny where you have called us to walk, God. God, we thank you right now for next year, Lord God. God, God, we thank you right now for great, uh, even greater vision, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask, Lord God, that you begin to put into Michelle exactly what you want next year, Lord God. Lord God, begin to pour into everybody that you want to serve next year, Lord God, everything that you want them to say, God, everything that you want them to do, Lord God. God, we thank you right now, Lord God. God, we thank you for just being who you are, Lord God. God, we thank you that even during this pandemic, Lord God, that you are showing up for us, Lord God. God, that you are caring for us, Lord God, that you are covering us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you right now for Michelle's life, Lord God. Mm-hmm. God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you cover her, Lord God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God. God, we declare right now, Lord God, that you are her provider, Lord God. God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you just continue to provide provide for her as you already have, Lord God. Lord God, we say whatever needs to be done in her life, Lord God, that it's done and it is so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we just thank you, God. God, I just can't thank you enough, Lord God, that even in this season, Lord God, that you are still in the blessing business, Lord God. And I just thank you for that, Lord God. God, I pray right now for any woman that is on the phone, Lord God, that is in lack right now due to this COVID-19, Lord God. I speak blessings over their homes, Lord God. Blessings over their finances, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. That's all you can say sometimes is thank you, Lord, because there's so much, Lord God, that you have done for us, Lord God. Things may look bleak right now, Lord God, and they may look gloomy right now, Lord God, but we know, Lord God, that you are Lord over all, God. God, Mm -hmm. we just thank you, God. We bless you, God, and we just praise you, God. Amen. 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 So ladies, we thank you for coming on tonight. Y'all, please don't be a stranger to each other. Some of y'all I can't see on Facebook and different things. I ain't that technically savvy, but we need to try to find each other so that we can stay connected. Even on the um, Complete Woman Conference page, Grown Girl Conversations, post stuff about your business, post what's going on in your life, post the blessings that that, that are being um given to you so that you can encourage the other women that are coming up, the new ones that are joining in so that they can see what this movement is all about. So Mm -hmm. I love all of y'all. I love y'all. I miss seeing your family. 
I'm happy, happy, happy to see you guys. I can't say it enough. Love, love, you. love you. Love you guys. Have a good love one. You. Okay. Bye. Uh-huh. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>